All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our expert panel, expert coach panel discussion. Uh, it takes a little a couple of minutes for people to find us and get on here. I will start by introducing myself and then I will pass along to the other coaches who are here. And we're still expecting two more who are running a bit behind. Um, but that's basically what happens. We go with the flow. So I, I'm sure that I know everyone here. I'm Jess Marcy. I am a clutter coach. Um, I never expected that I would be helping people tackle their clutter all over the place. And that was going to be my calling in life, but <laughs> that is what happened. Um, and it's truly a blessing for me to watch really lives transform in front of our eyes every single day. It's, it's a gift that, that was given to me. Um, I believe I worked in people's homes for quite some time, and I believe that all of our clutter is connected. Oh, Meredith is here. <laughs> Hi, guys. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm one minute's late. That's okay. Megan's not here yet either, so oh, she okay. has a work thing going on, though. Um, I believe all clutter in our lives is connected, and when you start, it's never about the stuff, okay? So, <laughs> spoiler alert, it is never actually about the stuff. When you start tackling this stuff, you open up the doors to all sorts of other clutter that you need to start dealing with. So when I created Clutter Boss Academy, I knew that I had to bring on other coaches across different disciplines to really be able to help people make change in their life. And actually, Meredith was the first coach that I asked to work with me initially. So let me pass to Meredith. Meredith, do you want to introduce yourself, share a little bit about your background and how you work within CBA? Absolutely. So hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. I'm Meredith Vaselli, and I am your health and nutrition and fitness and wellness and all that good stuff coach. Um, so how did I get here? Um, in 2009, I um, decided I wanted a big change in my life. I went from working in a corporate HR job that was sucking my soul and um, kind of making me sick at the same time. I was going through a lot in my personal life. And um, so I made a big change and I decided to follow my passion and um, study nutrition and not just nutrition, but integrative nutrition. And what that means is I look at the whole body. I see all the interconnectedness of what we eat and how it makes us feel and how it gives us energy and how it helps us fill up the way that we want to in life. And so I've been doing that since 2009. Um, I do group coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I absolutely love it. It is my passion. It is what I think I've been put on this earth um, to do. And I'm so thrilled to show up every week um, for you guys and for the community um, uh, that is amazing. It really is an incredible community. Um, every week we work on some um, element of our health. And I break it down in a way that is accessible for everyone. We don't try to move everything all at one time. I'm big into doing one small step at a time and kind of piecing it all together. Um, my philosophy is that there is no one way of eating that is uh, ideal for everyone. So it's all based on bioindividuality and um, you know, getting the basics down, getting more real food, less processed food, less sugar, more water, more movement, um, more sleep, less stress, all of that. And um, just helping everybody feel better in their own body. And um, it's been a really fantastic journey to get to know all of the wonderful women in this group. Um, they're just amazing people. And I encourage anyone who, you know, wants to take a positive step in their own life and um, maybe feel a little bit better uh, just to show up on one of these calls and you'll, you're going to absorb something. You're going to get something out of it and um, you're going to feel better. And that's really what it's all about. So um, I love my weekly calls with, with my people, <laughs> with the justice people. Um, and, and, you know, you have an incredible team of coaches here as well. So I'm just happy to be part of it. I'm thrilled that you're here, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So next to join our team, we're going to go historically here, was Allison. So Allison is a mindset coach, and I will let her introduce herself. 
Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, I am a mindset coach slash life coach slash feelings coach. <laughs> I kind of um, feel like the, the gist of everything that I do is that I help walk inside your inner world with you and find out the things that are really causing all the other things. I, I see everything as very, very layered. And we all um, have talked here about how clutter is not the real thing. It's always the things underneath. Um, so I, that's where I like to go. I like to go underneath, like find the things behind the things. And it always has so much to do with um, the way that we have learned to believe things, the way we think about ourselves, our relationship with ourselves, our safety within ourselves and our environment. So that's the kind of stuff that I really dive into. And it's every single call is always like deep and fun. And I just like could not love that more. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the kind of work that, um, that I do inside of CBA. I, I, this is the, this is the, the work I was born for is when I found coaching, I was like, this is it. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do. So it's just a total joy to do it inside the program. Thank you, Allison. All right, so next up is Denise Drinkwalter. Denise is a parenting coach, and I'm thrilled that she's part of our team now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I am Denise Drinkwalter, and yes, I am a parenting coach. I am a parent and a grandparent. And my primary work that I started doing in 2018 after I retired from education after 31 years um, I knew that I had a calling, just like the other women in that spoken so far, right, ladies? You know there's something more, and that's what I was feeling. There's something more I need to give back because I've always been that kind of person who loves to really listen to understand. So I just think what has happened in my 31-year career as an educator has continued to develop and grow. Um, I'm an forever learner myself. So I continue to expand my knowledge by digging in and deep diving in different areas in my life as well. So I continue to take courses and connect with masterminds and all that good stuff, because I don't think there is a finish line to learning. Um, and so in CBA, which Jess, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This community, I can't say enough about it. Um, so powerful. You have created such a safe environment for um, people to join and be a part of um, a community that's full of support, full of non-judgment, full of an opportunity to really dig in and understand yourself. Right, Allison, Meredith, like Wendy, like it's all about who am I and what do I need to do? So people who um, come to my calls, ask about parenting. And the, and the beautiful thing is that parenting can range from young, young children to you being the child in the relationship. And you might be needing help with your parents because I too am a daughter of a mom who's, you know, 87, wonderful woman. And I love her to bet bits, but holy smokes, there are moments, right? So you're just like, okay, how can I take this and move forward? So um, I love CBA. I love the opportunity to be here. And um, once a week I come on and we talk, I answer questions. I help people go through where their struggles are in the role of parent or child. And we figure things out. And I also too, like Meredith and Allison, do one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching as well on the side. So I stay busy as a retiree. <laughs> Which is the key to a long retirement, I think. <laughs> Finally, we have Wendy Mabry. I asked Wendy before this call, what is your actual, what, what is your title? Like, what do you do? I know that you talk a lot, a lot about communication, a lot about interacting with other people in relationships. And Wendy told me that she's actually an interpersonal relationship strategist. So <laughs> it's much fancier than I would have said, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> 
Yeah. So Allison is working about you and is working on your mindset, right? And Meredith's working on your body and your wellness. And Denise, maybe working on parenting relationships. I kind of look at all the other folks out there that need your understanding, whether they're bosses or spouses or other folks. I think the first key Allison has it is to understand your own emotions, your own feelings, what, what pings you, what turns you on, what makes you exhausted. And then once you have that, it's really good to look at other people and start to recognize patterns with them of uh, the best way that strategically you can approach them about stuff that might be difficult conversations or might be some, some people love to be praised out loud in public. Some people hate it, right? Do not, do not compliment me in front of other people. So it's all about figuring out what the people who are important to you need from you in your life so that you can have more successful relationships. So that's kind of the area that I do, but I do it in a lot of different ways. I've got a lot of uh, corporate experience like Meredith and like Denise and Allison, um, where I've been certified a whole bunch of different ways to slice up humans. So I take up a lot of that information that I've got that big companies use and try and figure out how we can help our members in Clutter Boss Academy just be more strategic about their relationships, figure out when things aren't working for them, or just how to mostly set them, themselves up for success. And then the other thing that I do that's a little bit different than everyone else is I do stand up comedy. That's my other job. So I try really hard. Some of our clutter conversations can be very heavy. I try really hard to bring some levity to them and some lightness because we all want to have fun. And I also want to echo one of the great things about this group of coaches. The one thing I hear from Jess too is we're all lifelong learners. So we're always looking for more things we can bring to the table and more ways we can help people. And one thing I've heard over and over again, if someone stumps the audience or stumps us as we go, we'll figure it out or let's look at the solution together. So we don't feel like we have all the answers, but we certainly have a good idea of where to look for the answers. And so I think that's the big deals. We're very solution oriented as a team. Absolutely. Okay. So the first question that I have for the panel is you probably never expected to be coaching in a clutter group. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. So how do you see clutter connected to your discipline? And we'll just go in the same order again. Oh, so I'm up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Oh, reverse. <laughs> No, I, I've got I've got ideas on this, thoughts on this for sure. So in the health and wellness world, it is a it is overwhelming with clutter. I mean, try to, you know, find a workout to do or try to find a diet and you'll get a hundred different things and they'll be conflicting and one will say, no, this is right, and no, this is wrong. And when that happens to people over and over again, you know what they do? They throw their hands up in the air and they say no, they close their laptop and, and they're like, oh, just never mind. You know, a confused mind says no over and over. And so my approach is to try to simplify and distill that huge world of food and fitness and um, everything that's related to health and wellness and bring it down to the simplest level where people go, oh, I can do that. Like, can I um, every morning go outside for five minutes within an hour of waking to get sunlight on my face so that I can sleep at night and so that my cortisol levels will be lower during the day? Yes, you can. Like that is a lesson. That is something that we worked on for a week and people were doing it and women were sleeping through the night for the first time in six months without any medication or anything else. And so it's that kind of stuff. Instead of overwhelming people with more and more information, you need this and you need this shaker bottle and this protein powder and this diet and this detox, eh, like enough of that. So it's real simple. It's like more water, a little bit more greens, little bit less TV at night and screens at night. And we do it slowly and we declutter like all that, that stuff, you know, that blocks us from our best health, from feeling good in our bodies and from thriving and in, in the way that we should feel. Absolutely. And one of the other insights that I've seen um, come out on your calls, Mare, is Sometimes we just also don't have space in our house to stretch yeah. or to yeah. prepare food. Or you know, I mean, clutter takes up space that you could be using for wellness. Right. And that was that's not maybe the most obvious connection until you say it out loud. Yes, absolutely. You can't, it's very hard to like put together a dinner if you can't find your pots and pans, if they're like buried. So, you know, follow Jess's all of her, you know, guidance and coaching and that, and then 
come with me and I'll help you how to, you know, teach you how to put together like a simple meal. So it, it all works together. It's like, you can have this intention of like, I want to get healthier. I want to lose weight. I want to do whatever. But if you can't, you know, find the path through the clutter, it's going to be very difficult. So you've got very practical, um, help from both sides and we put it together and try to make it really simple and very um you know approachable for everyone so i that's one more thing that i'm just gonna like include like you can show up no matter where you're starting from i don't care if you you know you don't know anything about fitness and you've never done like a jumping jack in your life like that's okay like just walk for five minutes like that's where we start and so i you know wherever you're at um please come, please show up. You know, we start from there and everyone's welcome. Awesome. All right. Allison, how do you see clutter connect to mindset coaching? (laughs) So I work with all the clutter in the mind and what's happening inside. And what I find over and over again is that um, we can be given the things to do all day long, but then we don't do them. <laughs> and it's the same kind of stuff that Meredith was talking about. It's, it's overwhelm. Um, you know, if it's about information, it's overwhelm. But what about when it's like, here's your exact step by step, and you're still not doing it. Mm-hmm. My job is to come in and be like, okay, it's okay. Like there's some, there's some reason that you're, the reason that you're stuck, the reason you're not doing it is because there's some kind of information happening inside of you and let's go find it. And it's always has something to do with um, it always has something to do with like the things we've been working out of our whole entire life and been reinforcing our whole entire life. And they're the same things that get us stuck over and over and over. And it looks a little bit different for every single person, but it's really um, it's, I kind of feel like a detective sometimes because I'm like, we're just going to go in and just look around and we're going to look at all the different things and the stuff that you have a hard time looking at with your own eyes and you need to bring someone else's brain in and show you, oh, hey, see, this is there. And then you finally see that it's there and realize the things that have been getting you stuck or keeping you from um, from taking any kind of step. And then we we get to say, OK, how do we how do we dismantle that? How do we challenge it? How do we look at it differently? How do we feel the way in our body that we want to in order to have the action of taking this step forward with this thing. So it's never, for me, it's not about like, um, let's just like make you do the thing. It's always about, let's figure out what's going on inside of your mind and your body so that you're actually going to have the pull and the want to, to do the thing. That's what we go in there and work on. And it's, <laughs> it's like all the, all the clutter inside and it's, it's so much fun. <laughs> It is. You love it. It's really. I good. love it. <laughs> what I love the most about it is that people, the things people didn't know they were stuck on. It's like, oh yeah, that's that thing there. And I've been judging myself about that. And I've been shaming myself about that. And my entire job is to break down shame. It's just, so once you start to realize, I don't, I don't have to like force myself. I'm not trying to just like make myself do a thing. It's actually a way I get to think in a little bit different way that makes it just happen. It just makes it have the flow and the organic steps then get taken. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. All right, Denise, how do you see clutter connected to parenting coaching? Great question. Um, (laughs) It's interesting to listen to both Meredith and Allison because there are connections that cross over without us even connecting and talking about this. Like this is this was not pre-planned. It's like, let's do this. And just 24 hour, we're doing this tomorrow. Who wants to hop on Jess Mercy sort of deals. Right. But everything that people are talking about, it's exactly the same, right? In the calls, people come forward with different situations that they are dealing with. And we take actionable steps we talk about what's going on with that relationship what is the stress what's happening behind the scenes i tend to like the other ladies let's find out the reality behind what you're saying because there's more information that we need to uncover before we come up with a plan of action and the plan of action is just you can go and do this just do this one thing because we how many people have books on their shelf 
I'm going to read that someday. I'm going to read that someday. I'm going to read that someday. Right? Hello. Right? Book decluttering, right? So <laughs> instead of having all those books and, oh, now I have to do and, uh, you know, blah, 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 come on the call. We chat about it. We come up with strategies and techniques. And all of a sudden, I have people who are saying, well, Allison was talking about this this week. And I'm like, of course she was. I didn't know that, right? That's like, I had no clue, but it just makes sense because of the way we kind of think and operate based on what we do. And so the connections that happen, there is realities that actually come forward that is very common throughout, but without us actually connecting and creating these plans. We're just talking from our skill set, right? So it's very cool how it all connects. It's all about clutter big surprise right <laughs> um and you know the other thing that's really really interesting when meredith you were talking about it and i'm like that's ex that's exactly what happens in my calls people will show up they might not even have any children yeah and they're sitting there saying, i have no children is that okay it's absolutely you don't it's not a requirement come on into the parenting call because what can happen is I have a similar situation with a sister or a brother or whatever. And so they can apply some strategies that make sense. Oh, I'm not alone. All of that great stuff. So, um, yeah, everybody is welcome at any time for the calls. Awesome. Thanks, Denise. All right, Wendy, how do you see clutter connected to interpersonal relationship you know, strategy? Really People use clutter to keep folks away. Sometimes they bemoan the fact that clutter can't pe draw people in. Right. So sometimes if you've cluttered for a long time and you've kept everybody at arm's length, when you declutter, you're now working on how do I repair relationships that might have been ignored or how do I how do how does that work even? Can I have people over? There's all kinds of the other ladies have already hit the nail on the head. It really is involved in all the things. It's it's one more mechanism to um, weirdly fill a hole in your life. And then when you get rid of that you have this new space for something new. So you're figuring out what do I want to put in that space? And that was the big aha, Jess, not to, if you have the next question for me is you were like, what would your house look like if when you walked in, it felt amazing and you felt like it was made for you. And I'm like, I hadn't even thought of that before. You know, I was, I was living in this mindset about, I was really grateful for hand-me-down furniture from like the fifth family that didn't fit in my living room. I was like, wait, I get to invent my own life as a grown up, right? This is amazing. So, so when you start to feel that and you start to figure it out as people do in CBA, then you start to look at us coaches to help figure out what your best life looks like. So it all connects. <laughs> it all connects. Um, okay. I have another question, but I also want to just say, if you have a specific question, go ahead and pop it into the chat. Um, and we do have quite a few people watching us. So I want to officially say hello to everyone because when we started, we had like one person, but now we're up to 45. So hello, everyone. <laughs> I am so glad that you are here. If you have any questions, go ahead, pop them into the chat. Um, I am curious, and we don't need to go in any particular order, but how has your life changed since you started coaching around clutter? <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> it's what we're in this order. Let's keep it, keep it simple. All right, we'll keep the order. <laughs> um, well, since I've known Jess, and it's been several years now, um, my life has gotten infinitely better <laughs> because I hear her voice in my head um, all the time, actually. Like when I'm full, actually this morning, I was like folding dish towels and I was like, I love my dish towel drawer now because she taught me how to fold them so that I see them and there's only four and all four of them I love. And I used to have like 24 and I try to shove them in my drawer and I was like, I have to keep them all because my mom gave me this one from, you know, 20 years ago. So I hear her voice saying things like, you know, stop the flow and more out and, you know, all that good stuff. And um, so I really do try to apply it to my own life all the time and to my children. So I have two little boys that are seven and nine. And uh, once a week, we kind of look at their rooms and I'm trying to teach them the skills that I did not have as a child of, you know, do we love this? Do we really want it? Or is it something to let go of and to give it to someone else? And I think that's such a great life skill. And whether it's toys or whether it's food, you know, like what do you bring into your house? Do you, do you clutter it up with stuff that's going to make it more difficult for you late at night? You know, when you're like, 
bored or sad and you've got all this stuff now that you can dive into? Or do you want to, you know, keep it simple and keep it clean and keep everything around you um, in such a way that it supports the life that you want to live, you know? And I've, I've learned that from Jess and um, very thankful, you know, to be part of this group. And, and I feel like I'm always learning something from somebody. I hear these nuggets and I'm like, yeah, that's so good. So <laughs> I remember when we did that lesson on how to fold a dish towel. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was my first question for him. Like, I don't, cause she said like, start small, you know, don't do the whole kitchen, just pick one drawer. And I was like, oh, I know which drawer I want to do. I hate this drawer. And I look at it, you know, all the time. And that really stuck with me. I love it. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> Allison, how has coaching around clutter changed your life or home? Or <laughs> Yeah, I think what I've realized is that um, being in the environment all the time, I've learned so much about releasing. And I think that I hadn't really, uh, I'd, I'd really never made that connection. And so I do I have habitually kept a lot of things that I just never came back to again, but it was with the mindset of like, like what if, and wait, maybe I should. And just, I, I also hear your voice in my head about like the more things you have, the less value everything has that's in my mind a lot. And so I've, I've really learned the, the practice of releasing items. And I've noticed how the more that I do that, I'm like, Oh, this is literally like, just a skill set. The actual practice of releasing is a skill set. And I use it for my thoughts too. too. Now I'm like, oh, every time I give away a thing, I'm practicing this skill set of releasing, which is also helping me move my mind to where I want it to be. So I'm like constantly using it in that way. I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. <laughs> Denise, how has coaching around clutter impacted your life? Um, I'm going to say that for me, it has helped me continue to be simplified, basically. So I hear the complexity behind the conversations that are happening, but my role is to simplify it. So whatever we talk about becomes actionable, right? So not only simplifying what the flow coming in, but simplifying in terms of um, what's going on in your head and all of the things you think about that you didn't do as a parent and all that stuff. I think um, working in doing the coaching once a week has really afforded me an opportunity to learn a new way because I tend to be what they call an over deliverer. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. it's like, I have changed my strategy huge with that. Um, and so I think that I'm giving enough information that allows them to deal and tackle with the situation that is brought up during the conversation, even though I know there's a whole lot more I'd love to go off and do, but I keep it narrow focused and one step at a time. So I think that's what has helped um, me and, and I'm grateful for the opportunity because it has I have been immersed in it through CBA. And as a result, it's opened up a new lens for me to think differently, right? Which yeah. has been beneficial, huge for me in many ways. Yeah, I love that. Thanks, Denise. Wendy, how has working with clutter <laughs> impacted your life? So I'm here because I was a Jess client. And like the, the, the impression Meredith and Allison were brought in and Denise as experts, whereas I was super cluttered. So I just happened to have- You were an expert, but you also had clutter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm an expert who had my own clutter to deal with, right? So I always tell people in CBA, I'm here because I'm you, just a little further down the road. And I still actively struggle with it. So I know it really intimately well, but it has changed. I just went to on a vacation. I did not hoard the hotel samples, of stuff, which previously I'd be like, oh, free shampoo. And like, if you looked in my bathroom, there was like rows of when I have guests, they're going to want these shampoos. I don't know what magazine I read that in, but I probably still have a copy of it stacked in a pile somewhere. <laughs> like I had issues. Um, things have gotten a lot simpler in my life too. I've learned to travel with less. I've gotten rid of a ton of stuff. I've gotten rid of clothes that no longer fit me. I found out that I used to buy stuff for imaginary Wendy that might do things that she, real Wendy doesn't do. We don't buy for imaginary Wendy anymore. Like I've learned so many life-changing things since working with you, Jess. I can't even like 
began to say it in a tiny little nugget during this thing, but it's, so that's changed me in my own growth pattern of what I've learned from lessons you've taught. I, I had eight books on clutter. Okay. And none of them made a difference. I started buying clutter books 12 years ago. This is like the first thing that's ever really impacted my mindset. And maybe I wasn't ready for it until then. I always tell people like, when you're ready, you'll take action. Sometimes we're planting seeds. Maybe right now, if you're listening to this, we're planting a seed with you and you're not ready to do it yet, but three months from now you will be ready. Right? So every little bit helps. So there's been the stuff that Jess has taught me and then the stuff that comes out and calls from other members of CBA or other coaches. I've learned a ton from all three of Allison Meredith and Denise both. I've called Denise with problems with my seven-year-old. I'm like, what do I do? Am I a terrible mother? And she's like, no, everybody's still alive. You're, we're winning, you know? <laughs> and I went on a retreat with Meredith. So it's going, it's learning in all directions, right? It, it's the stuff I learned from you, Jess, but then also the people in CBA have been a huge help. I've fallen in love with several other members or just like family now, and that support is incredible. So so in some ways, the, the knowledge can come from, from us. We're here to be experts, but a lot of ways we get so enriched by, by the people that we're here to serve because it goes both ways. That's one of the, I, what I, the thing that I love the most about having ongoing programs and, you know, CBA is a year long. If you join Clutter Foundations, it goes on indefinitely. Um, but because there's people in there for so long, at some point you switch from being the mentee to the mentor, right? So, and there's a huge positive, lots of positive things that can happen when you're teaching somebody else and sharing with somebody else what you've already learned, right? Actually enhances your own personal growth and journey and pushes you that much further. And that's a, a beautiful thing about coaching is that we get th th that benefit every single day. Um, we have a question here. This is a great one. How to work with family members who just want to help, but I can't explain how I need to do it myself. How would you guys tackle that question? Go, Denise. <laughs> Um, first, the, the thing that I would definitely say right off the hop is I will let you know when I need help. And that way you don't have to explain your needs. You don't have to say, oh, I have to do because there'll be a lot of possible things that come up for you that will stir inside you that will make that a very difficult challenge. So you can just say, I'll reach out to you if and when the need arises. And I just allow myself that time and space to be able to say something that gives them an opportunity to know that you have, have heard that they want to help you and that you get to decide when that help is going to enter in. That's my thoughts. Love it. Anyone else have a strategy? I guess if it's someone that doesn't live with you, as I'm assuming, right? If they live with you, you can give them a section they can do and totally take their help. Like, is their clothing need to go through or can their toys or their stuff go through, you know, with, with your principles? Can you declutter side by side? Can they lift the heavy crap? There's lots of ways people can help you keep you company while you go through it too. Right. Um, but uh, if they don't live with you and they want to drop in, that can be tough. So I would just say, Hey, can you come over and sit with me and drink a cup of tea while I'm doing it or keep me company or find a way to, I mean, cause there's, they want to help and you don't want to deny that support, right? You want to increase that relationship. But if you have to touch your stuff and that is tough sometimes to figure out a way to do that. I saw you have to go, Allison. I do, but I have one more thought to add on. To <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> and then I have to jet out here early. Um, when, there's a lot more information probably going on internally there. Um, but I would just get curious about where, what it is that you don't want and what it is that you do want, because you may not want help because of things happening inside of you that have to do more with shame or fear and like not knowing how to explain yourself or not knowing how to, um, just give yourself that space. Like Denise was saying, like you always have the ability to have whatever space that you need and you can always ask for that. And also um, you may want connection with that, but you're afraid or you have some shame around it. And so that's something to get curious about it and just maybe um, do a little bit of just like brain download to see what is it actually that I do want and that I don't want. And it'll give you a little bit more clarity on that. Awesome, Allison. Allison, I know you have to run. Allison, we knew she had to leave early. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice seeing you. Nice to see you. Goodbye, Maybe everybody. Maybe will join us now. We'll just swap you guys out. I don't know, though. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, my next question, and you guys keep your questions coming in the comments. Um, 
imaginary Kate and imaginary Tanya must have been plan planning together. And I see Kate says, imaginary Kate brought, bought lots of clothes for imaginary occasions also. Well, so much of our clutter is connected to our identity or imaginary identities. Um, okay, so if you were talking to somebody who had clutter, you know, they had no idea about any of the clutter programs we run or anything, and you just had to come up with one good piece of advice for them, what would be your best piece of advice that you would give to somebody who's just struggling with clutter and doesn't know where to start from your coaching perspective? Um, I would I would suggest starting even smaller than you think you should start, like itty bitty, rather than, you know, saying I'm going to declutter this particular space or drawer for 20 minutes, like not even attaching a time to it or making it even smaller, you know, three minutes. Like, can you do and, and I kind of use this approach with with like training people like you don't want to maybe run for 30 minutes, but you can run for one minute, right? We can do anything for one minute. And so, so much of getting started, whether it's decluttering or, you know, improving your diet or whatever, it's about overcoming that inertia, you know, all the things in our head that are telling us, I can't do it. I tried before. I'm going to fail again. It's going to be too hard. You know, all of that stuff and just kind of busting through that and, and getting a little bit of win, just you know, just a tiny bit of positive energy goes a long way. You get that momentum. And then before you know it, you know, you said you were going to do it for three minutes and you look up and it's like 10 minutes later and you feel good because you got rid of some stuff. So I would say just start even smaller than you might think. Great advice. <laughs> Wendy or Denise, what was, what's your one piece of advice to somebody struggling with clutter? Wendy, go for it. So my first one is just stop the flow in. That sounds so easy, but just like, don't bring anything in for a minute. Like give yourself some, because, because it's a lot of times the first thing you do when you feel cluttered is go buy some organizing bins, right? <laughs> or you go, oh, I'm so cluttered. I'm going to buy, that's my thing. I'm going to buy something to solve this problem. Like I'm going to buy a clutter book and then I don't have time to read it. It's like, stop buying stuff. The other really simple one that Jess told me that was a mind blowing one. And, and I think, probably Jess, you laughed a lot with me because I'd go, what? And she would say like, don't get receipts. Her stuff, you know, you're not going to return. Meals at restaurants are gone, right? Why Why are you getting a receipt? Like stop the paper. Because I would just get all these little bits of paper and put it in my wallet and then have to declutter my wallet. Everywhere. Stop. So don't take receipts for gas. Don't take receipts for <laughs> restaurants. So you're not returning it. It's done deal, right? So little, a little tiny habit like that can mean a lot less clutter in your house. And sounds I am ruthless about no paper coming into my house. I mean, yeah. do not try to hand me a business card. I will take a picture of that. Like <laughs> Denise, go for it. For me, I think the biggest thing is um, very similar to what Meredith is talking about, but um, figure out one little thing that you might be able to do. And I talk a lot about if you are so overwhelmed, you don't even know where to start, like you just frozen, just start by taking a breath right? Like just do some things to, to, to make you feel better inside your own body for just a little bit, just starting there to calm the mind, because as the mind keeps going crazy, then you just keep going, right? We all know you cycle, you cycle, you cycle, you cycle. Another thing that's really good is when you're cycling, get a paper and a pencil and just write down all the stuff that's going in your head and get it out on the paper. And it seems so silly, but it can be so powerful. Just stop cycling. Just put it down on paper. What's bothering you? And then when you you've got it down, then just walk away. You've done something. You have released some of the stuff that you just continue to think about and think about. Um, if if you are connected at all through any of Jess's programs, reach out to somebody who's in that connective group. Power in the community is huge. And if you need to reach out to one person that you feel comfortable with or the bigger, like do what, something like that to surround yourself with the positive energy that does exist. So that's another piece. Absolutely. The power of community is undeniable. Um, Cheryl, you will be able to, we're going to share this video. This video is, is going to stay on this link. You just have to click on it to watch it again. We're going to share a direct link to it as well. Um, 
I don't want to go on for too much longer because I know that everybody has, it's Friday afternoon and I literally asked everyone to do this yesterday. So um, if there is somebody out there who is not sure about where to go next, if they're not sure about joining CBA, what would you say to them uh, given your experience coaching in CBA? Run and sign up. Do not <laughs> wait another minute. And you know, I'm not a salesy person at all. <laughs> like at all. However, um, I have no problem encouraging you to do this program because I see the changes, positive, positive changes in people's lives all the time. And I mean, not like a little change, but I've seen firsthand people completely redesigning their days, their homes, their lives, their relationships, how they think. I mean, I've heard people's voices change from the first time I had someone on the call and it was like monotone, weak, like sad, you know, and now this person shows up on the call and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like energetic and she's got all these things going and it's like a different person. So if you have, you know, heard Jess speak or read some things and heard some things from people and you're on the fence, just, like get off the fence as fast as you can, because the sooner you join, the sooner your life is going to improve. The quality of your life is going to improve exponentially. I can't emphasize that enough. The, the relationships that you will create with the women in this group are going to be like nothing else you, you probably experience. The support, the unconditional love, um, and the, the, the just volume of wisdom collectively with the group, not just with the coaches, but with the women that are in this group, um, it's really remarkable. So if you've been toying with the idea, um, I, I strongly encourage you to, to do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Denise or Wendy, do you have anything to share? I have been involved in multiple groups um, for various reasons, um, whether I'm doing the coaching or whether I'm a participant or whether it's been a boot camp here or there or anywhere. And I can say with utmost honesty and heartfelt appreciation, I have never, ever experienced, witnessed, or seen a community like this. And I am not just saying, okay, this is, this is it. I am being a hundred percent honest. I have never witnessed such a positive judgment-free supportive community in my, and I'm saying in my career, I'm talking even in my educational career, when I was involved in a variety of different communities for a variety of reasons, I have never witnessed something as positive and powerful as this group. And it's all because I said something to my husband last night, because we were talking about another situation and, and I won't go off there, but I said, it does not matter the size of the organization. The leader is key on what happened in any community. I don't care what you say. And I'm, I'm a leader. I mean, that's what I did. So Jess, you have created something incredible. And if you are wondering at all or worried at all, I would say reach out, talk to people, find out what impact this has had for them. I'm like you, Meredith, probably Wendy. We see people and they are changing in front of our eyes. It's so, so amazing to watch. And it's a, something you could never dream of. Um, absolutely. Thank you, Jess, for providing it and showing the way on how to be supportive, respectful, and non-judgmental. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you. Thank I'm going to cry. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> Here's Wendy. Your no one cries alone in my presence. Uh, <laughs> so there's the coaches that you just saw, but there's also a bunch of coaches you haven't met on this particular call that are remarkable and amazing and have their own strengths and stories they bring. And what I've told Jess, I think she did very well, is build a bench strength of different people. If you like fast talkers, I'm your jam, but they have plenty of coaches that are a lot slower than me. So if I'm wearing you out, don't worry. Got people <laughs> Wendy, really, she, you really slowed down your talking for this. I, I appreciate that. I'm really excited, you guys. Um, like Denise said, I've been a part of lots of online communities. They're 
is rarely one so full of unconditional support and non-judgment and and really present and, and deep knowing of someone and rooting for them and being excited for them. I am so excited with other members of CBA's journeys, whether it be in adopting or fostering kids, um, people moving in and out of their lives, grown children going off to college, new babies, all kinds of different life stages that folks are in. Um, and one of the things I wanted to tell you really fast is I I feel like um, I, I there are people who do things intentionally. And I think I fell backward into CBA in some way because I was like, oh, it sounds okay. But it felt a little bit like it's a lot. This is a lot. It's a lot of money. I'm nervous about it. And um, I have definitely saved the money that I would have spent on stuff that that is pretty expendable. So I would say the money objection for a single mom without any other income to rely on, that was a big concern of mine and that I've I've learned to save money and spend differently where that's that's negligible. That was a budget even out, perhaps even saving more money. Um and the other one was time. I will tell you there's lots of different interests in CBA, lots of different calls that you can cover. And and if when you start, if you decide to take this leap, and I would love it if you did, you actually get Colleen in a jumpstart month that sort of plants out for you what's the best way in. Because it's like drinking from a fire hose. There's a lot coming at you and you don't want to get overwhelmed. So Colleen helps figure out like what's a good track for you to start before you get on in there. So I think that was really important. And I completely forgot what you asked. <laughs> oh, that was great. What did you ask though, Jess? I had something, I had a whole train of thought. It just derailed. I said, what would you say to somebody who oh, was thinking run. about? <laughs> like, fairness, just run. Here's what I would tell you. If you, to try it out because it is, it'll become your new favorite thing. And then, and you wake up and you get to hang out with Rebecca in the sunshine room. Or if you're a late night person, you can hang on and date night declutter or whatever. Or you have some middle of the day, you need some help. There's someone there for you too. There's so much replay, so much book. You get a fantastic big course book here too. I would tell you to join and check it out because I have a really good feeling that if you join and start, you're going to stay because it's amazing and it's transformative. So um, if you feel nervous, like they said, reach out to one of us and chat with us. Jess is also great about um, if you say, I, I'm, if you, if I haven't backed out cause I love it, but if you say like, Hey, I've been here a couple months and it's not my jam. It's not like we're going to hold you over the rails forever. We want you to be here cause you love it. So, um, we want this yeah. to work for you. And we are real live humans who understand real live circumstances. And yes, we have you sign a contract, but yes, I am not going to say if you have like a medical emergency and have no money left, well, you got to stick to this contract. I mean, that's just not the right thing to do. We are guided by ethics and honesty and trust and non-judgment and support <laughs> and all of those things. Um, the, money, the money objection is, it's so interesting because I actually was trying to figure out how much we spent on Amazon last year because I was hoping to give like a number. I <laughs> said like, it's, you know, but look at how much you're spending on stuff because when you join CBA, it's not that you stop bringing stuff in just because we tell you not to, you stop bringing stuff in because the way you look at everything in your life changes for the rest of your life. So it's not like you temporarily stop bringing stuff in. You become a conscious consumer and you curate a perfect environment for yourself and it changes everything. So that's, <laughs> I am going to try and pull another panel together with the rest of the coaches. Uh, at some point this weekend, we are, you can imagine coordinating like 15 schedules is just, <laughs> it is insane. So stick around in our groups, um, look for the notifications. As soon as I pull something together, I will let everyone know and post it. And everything is always recorded. Mary, did you want, I saw you unmuted. Did you want to say something? <laughs> no, I was just always <laughs> Say goodbye whenever you're when, when <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I'm not rushing you. Um, all right. Are there any are there any more questions before we wrap up our panel discussion? And Megan has been texting me. She says that there Megan works um in the mental health field in addictions, actually, and she has a patient in her office right now and cannot get onto this call. So we will give her a pass, but I will try and get her to pop into the group and say hello later, just so you can see who she is and get a sense for Megan's a psychotherapist who does mental health support in CBA. Um, and I also would like to say, yeah, there's, if CBA is not on the, on, you know, in your future, then there's other options as well. Just don't give up on yourself. Don't stop now. Like, just keep moving forward. <laughs> 
All right. So you guys, thank you so, so, so much. I so appreciate your willingness to just be available on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> it was fun, wasn't it? We should do more of these. Yeah. I like the Friday hangouts. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll start that. <laughs> yeah. So normally you just hang out with Allison with the show of no name, but we would hang out with you too. <laughs> I know. I know. We didn't have our show this morning, but um, yeah, we could do that. We could do like live panels and why not? <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> Anything is possible. What One of the things that we're focusing on in CBA right now is what if it turns out better than you ever imagined? Oh, and I'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> what if you make this scary decision and it turns out better than you ever oh. imagined? So on that note, sending you guys lots of love. Have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend. And if you have questions, there's so many people who are here to answer them. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.